Okay, uh, my name is Armando Valdez Velasquez. I work for Foundations of Success, and I'm a member of the Conservation Coaches Network in Latin America. I'm based in Lima, and uh, we have a really sweet thing here for you today regarding how to use Mural for these virtual facilitations and virtual workshops that we're doing so much these days. Um, Olivia and Felix, would you like to introduce yourselves briefly? Uh, sure. I'm Olivia Millard. I'm with the Nature Conservancy and am part of the coordination team and the board for CCNet and really happy to be here today, located in smoky coastal California. Hi, everyone. My name is Felix uh, Chibula. I am based in Berlin, Germany at the moment. I uh, work as an independent consultant. Um, for adaptive management and conservation planning. Um, been active with CCNET uh, ever since I started my career. I think many of you have seen my name, but um, for those of you that we haven't met yet, hi. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Felix. So we're going to be mixing several things. One is showing you the screen, sharing the screen with you and what we have been doing the mural and another one will you will have a chance to move around in mural too. So my first point in the agenda is how to use mural. I'll be covering that. Where in the world are we? That's something we're going to do together. Uh, what can we do with mural? How we can use mural for our facilitations? Uh, then a little bit of a demo on uh, how to collaborate, create outlines, use timers, and vote in Mural. And then um, finally, we will have uh, a small section on how much does Mural cost, how do you get, it, how do you invite others to Mural, and learn a little bit more about Mural. There's a lot of tutorials out there that we can use. So first things first, what you're seeing is the canvas on my computer, on my screen, you can see to the right that there's an outline. This outline has several different sections that we will be covering with you. You can move basically by zooming in and zooming out. Down here at the right, there's a little canvas. That canvas is the whole thing. And you can either move your space like this, Right, or you can controls in with the controls. Okay, uh, other thing that's really, really important to do or to be able to do is how to add elements to Mural. Basically, Mural is really intelligent for this, really smart. You just double click on any part of the Mural and a sticky note will appear. That sticky note is yellow. That's the standard, the default. But you can do several things with that sticky note. You can change its size to a three by five sticky note, or you can change it to a circle sticky note. You can change it to a text box. Okay. Um, let's say we are on the, on a, sorry, let's change it to a three by three sticky note. I can change also the color. So I can make it white, or I can change it to, uh, purple, light, lila, lila. I can also put the border or take the border away. I can change the text. It, it, Mural doesn't come with a lot of fonts, but I can ch change the, the font too. I can make the box bigger. Oh, sorry. I can make the box bigger. Uh, I was going to use marker felt. Okay. I can make the font size bigger or smaller. And um, I can also, if I do, I, I can duplicate it just by clicking after the, the first one that I did. Or I can do something which is control D. There's a lot of shortcuts. Control D is the one we use the most basically because it duplicates what you have. So I can change this to box two. And another thing that's really important is I can connect them. So how can I connect them? 
to the left of my screen, you will see that there's a gray column with, with different things. If I go to the first one, that's another way that I can include sticky notes and text boxes and titles and comments. There's also shapes and connectors. So I can put a connector between this box and this box. And there I connected them. So you can think this can help for results chains and the like, but I can also use other shapes, right? I can put in a hexagon that resembles, oh, sorry, that was a border. That resembles a strategy, or I can use a blue box that will resemble a result. So I can do that kind of stuff. I can also include icons, like um, I can search for them, and then I have different icons. It's all from the web, so I can use different icons. Uh, this is a pin, for example, and drag it and put it right there. I can also, I'm going down a little bit, I can also use images and any image, like let's say I want a tree. And then I will get a whole lot of trees that are from just searching. Let's say I'm gonna put that tree there. So I got a tree. I can be very, very exact in what I'm, or, or very detailed in what I'm trying to, to look for. And I can provide other kind of images. So this makes it very versatile and very flexible to what the needs are in each one of the, of the uh, workshops that we have. I can include, for example, a downloaded GP, uh, JPEG from Murati from a results chain and then put post-its into it. But Felix will show you a little bit more about that. Okay. Um, one other thing that I wanted to show you is that with the trackpad, I use a trackpad, but you can also use the mouse wheel. With a trackpad, I can also zoom in by expanding my two fingers or zoom out by reducing them. And that is something that with the mouse wheel, you can do just by uh, turning the, the mouse wheel towards you or uh, away from you. And, and if you use two fingers on the trackpad, you will move from one place of the mural to the other. Okay. I think uh, that is the first part of what I wanted to show you of, I think Felix, you're on. Yes, thank you, Armando. Uh, we're going to, um, uh, I'm going to share my screen uh, once you unshare, thank you. And uh, we're actually going into the first um, hands-on session. Currently we have 74 people in this call. So let's see if we can, if we will break mural. Um, this is quite a big group. We have tried to um, to keep things separate. So the mural that Amanda just used to show you the, the features is not the same working space, let's say, um, that you will do the, the hands-on session, but um, <clears throat> this is going to be interesting. Um, all right, the, starting my screen share now, you should see it. Um, the exercise is called Where in the World? And basically the question is, we will provide you a link in Zoom uh, in just a moment. I have it prepared in the chat that you click and you are being allowed to enter exactly that mural, uh, the one that you're seeing on my screen right now. You're entering it as a guest. So you don't need an account with mural. You simply click on the link. Anybody can, can access that link. Your task will be <clears throat> to grab one of the pins on the left hand side. Uh, and add it to the world map to show not where you're based, um, not where you are right now, but where in the world you would like to be at this moment if it wasn't for the pandemic. Uh, and then once you have placed the pin, uh, we give you like two, three, four minutes for this exercise. You can also navigate to the left-hand side uh, menu bar that you see here. And under this little icon here, you see images or actually the one that uh, Amanda just showed you. Feel free or try to add an image of that place or something that resembles it, a forest, a desert, you know, a beach, a house with your books, whatever it is. Um, feel free to be creative um, and, uh, and do that. Also, the pins don't match the number of people in this call. 
So some of you will have to add your own pin and you find those pins under this little star thing here, icons, there's a gazillion of different pins. So feel free to, um, to explore that feature. Um, I'm going to share the link now. We might experience a little bit of a lag, which will be the first lesson learned. If you do a mural, try to keep the numbers manageable. Um, but let's see, you know, this is not our fault. This will be on mural side. Uh, good feedback for them. I'm sharing the link now. Click it and see what happens. Um, and we will see you come in. Uh, yeah, or copy paste a pin to add a new one. That's also totally doable, Erica, of course. And you see on the bottom screen, there's all these anonymous animals and critters uh, coming in. A visiting penguin, I see. <coughs> visiting rhino. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. It's in course of the Zoom. The mirror. And Armando and Olivia, if you can start muting people and Christina. All right. Oh my God. Look at that. So on my end, I see it very smoothly. Things work out, but um, interesting to hear everyone else's uh, experience uh, when we go, once we go into the, the, the debrief of this session. No, Anuska, you don't need a mural account. Uh, it's asking for a password. It shouldn't. The link that I, that I sent you was you can ask to, um, to go in as a guest. Not being right. able to go in, Gustavo. Hmm, what is the message that you're getting? <clears throat> I see a lot of people in here, and they're all appearing as a visiting animal, which means they're all guests in that mural. So mine asked for an account, and I clicked again, and it didn't. OK. So Jacqueline is saying that just try to click the link again. Um, there is a message popping up to say, if you have an account, feel free to log in and join as your real name. If you don't have an account yet, feel free to join the mural as a, um, as a guest. All right. <clears throat> you can also make those images a little smaller, place them wherever you want to be. Try not to cover the world. Try not to cover the world. It's beautiful. Yeah. I would love to be at all of those places, to be honest. Looks very nice. Yeah. Okay. Gustavo says now it worked. It was just a delay, potentially linked to the amount of people trying to, to access that, that one workspace at the same time. Is a please resend request? Do you still have it on your clipboard? I could oh, yeah, it. yeah. Sorry, I can I can resend it. There you go, Musa. Very nice. I love seeing all these places. Beautiful. All right. It, this is art in the making, apart it from the, <laughs> how useful it is. It's art in the making. It's amazing. It's really nice. Uh, and so while you are placing the last images in here and resizing and, and doing stuff, for those of you who have already finished up their little image, feel free to explore more. The entire left-hand side that Amanda showed you, you know, you can add icons, images, lines. I see the first arrows and images uh, and icons appearing. That's great. Um, the idea here is, you know, this is sort of like an icebreaker. You can use that with your teams to basically get people introduced to Mural um, and, um, and just, yeah, loosen up. You can ask them, you know, where are you, you know, located at the moment? Yeah, the possibilities are endless. There will be more hands-on sessions uh, throughout this call. Okay, so while you're finishing uh, up... Can I Olivia? one question? Somebody is asking, how do you resize images? So you should be able to click on the image and get those draggable lines at the corner and make it smaller that way. But I did have some difficulty doing that. It took a little while, which may be by virtue of how many people are on this mural. And actually, I think you have to grab the bottom right-hand corner. It's yeah. the only corner that allows you to resize an image and not every mm -hmm. corner of the image. Um, that's a little... Once you get a corner, uh, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, bottom right-hand corner. Yeah, thank you, Molly. Uh, yeah. Karen asked for the pins. Um, you can 
grab one of the pins that exist already and do control D and that create duplicates the pin. The other thing you can do is go to the left exactly where um, Felix's hand is right there on the, on the icons and in icons just write pin. Can you, yeah, exactly there. So for those of you following uh, the screen share that is still happening in Zoom, you see that I typed in pin under this little icon here on the left hand side. Um, <clears throat> all right, I think this, is, this has worked successfully. Um, just to mention quickly, there is a few areas here that you can, that you can explore. Right now you are visiting this as a guest. Um, as a guest, you have limited or actually no admin features, obviously. Uh, you don't want to give uh, guests admin features. So you are actually looking at this as a participant of a potential workshop that you may lead at some point using Mural. Um, yeah, and so um, this actually, this, uh, this where in the world exercise, uh, you can also uh, grab it or, you know, we can copy paste it and make it available. Uh, I think it is available. I'm under help me out. Is it in the public library? Uh, because we've tweaked this heavily. I made the background blue and, you know, added some layouts, but where does it come from originally? It's, it's not in the public library right now, but we can put it in the public library. Okay. It is yeah. in the public library on Mural. It's one of their templates. Ah, okay. Oh, no, you mean, you mean the map, but we, not this one, not the tweaked one, right? Okay. Yeah, not, not the tweeted. Yeah, exactly. Not the tweaked one. Yeah. Um, and actually inside this, this template feature, there is a, a, a lot of templates uh, available for every kind of session that you can imagine, a brainstorming session, um, round robins, what, whatever the, uh, it is, or whatever the process is that you, that you lead. Um, so that's I just want to note, uh, Christina has just pointed out there are 73 people on the Zoom and only 59 in Mural. And so uh, are there any people who are having trouble accessing it? Maybe there are people here on the phone. Anyone need help at <clears throat> this point? I think people on the phone being, yeah, it took forever for yeah. me to load. Uh, or it's too slow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Melissa, Marissa. Good feedback. Definitely good feedback. Um, <clears throat> all right. This is pretty much everything that we wanted you to do in, in this session. Like I said, later on, we'll show you recreations of, of uh, conservation standards, for example, you know, products like diagrams and stuff. Um, but I'll first hand over to, to you, Armando, again, to, to demo the features. I'm going to stop my screen share. Um, everyone, please make sure that you come back to the Zoom window where we share uh, the screen so you can, you can see what, what's happening. Okay. Oh, and sorry, Armando, before you start, just go ahead, to be go clear, ahead. because I got a private message, uh, we have no affiliations to Mural whatsoever. We're not being paid. It's just one of the platforms um, that is being, that's out there for, for digital whiteboards. Um, we just found out uh, about it, you know, as everybody else. And it ranked among the highest uh, for us to provide a webinar within CCNet. So this is the reason why we chose uh, Mural as the platform to demo. We can demo any other platform or anybody on the network can demo any other platform. So we're not being paid, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, there's nothing that we get from it. Uh, this is really just us from the network um, providing our you know, small experience with the platform. We've run, we all three of us have run workshops with this or are still running workshops with this. All right. Commando? Yeah, thank you, Felix. Um, yeah, may, maybe we should have done that and talked to Mural about this first and <laughs> get some sponsorship. Anyway, um, I want to show you uh, two things. This, where you see demonstration, and I've colored it differently. This is an area, okay, on my, on my screen. This is an area, and why do we work with areas? Areas are kind of the way mural uh, divides a canvas. And you can do several things with an area. You can put it or take it away from an outline. And if you think about a workshop, you could be using the outline as the different steps in a workshop, the different um, sessions in the workshop. So right now we're in demonstration. If I click on it on the outline, I'm taken directly to this place. Another thing is that as an area, you can export it. 
And that means that whatever you put inside the area will be exported and you can export it as a PDF or as an image, right? So it's, it, if you're looking at uh, reporting on a workshop, for example, or sharing this with other, other uh, people, this is a great way to do it because you can then build kind of like a small report or a book with all the different PDFs of areas. People I've worked with create the areas and they can be really, really fancy. You can include images within the area. So you could do kind of a, a beautiful um, scenery or, uh, or put something behind it or around it that will make it nice. Within an area, as, as we were looking at, you can include several things. I'm gonna include just um, an image of a workshop. Okay, and I'm gonna put this workshop here and then I can include one of the a sticky, um, a little uh, pin or something and, and write something there. This is a workshop. I can also include by double clicking one other image, one other um, sticky, but then turn it into a text and say, this workshop is about learning to use Mural. Okay, so this I can turn into something that could be the description of what I'm doing in, in, in the workshop. And as you see, once I have that in the area, it's still not part of the area. To make it part of the area, I have to Click on the area. Oh, sorry. I got to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to click on the area. It's locked. And I'm going to show you that afterwards. And I've got to absorb. But I can do several things here too. I, when I absorb, I make them part of the area. So now these three items are in, included into the area. I can also do a couple of other things too which is create several of these. I'm gonna duplicate them. And then I'm gonna organize them in a certain way. Wait a minute. Uh, right now they got all mixed. You're, al you're aligning them. Yeah, you I align them the incorrectly. On the left-hand side, on the left-hand side, but no. You're under align, you need to take the third icon from the left in that menu. For what? This one, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, into a column I can, I can do it or into a grid. I was trying to align them to the left, but yeah. Um, and you can do this. So this is very helpful if you wanna have, for example, a brainstorming and everybody starts writing their, their little uh, stickies and then you wanna put them all into, a, I don't know, into a row and then move them down and you can keep on working with this in a different way. And while absorbing, then you can make it work towards uh, exporting or anything. One thing that's really, really important is you have to lock it, okay? Why? Because I can move it right now and I can move everything. But if you have not had time to absorb something, then if you move it, you move it without what, what's in it, on it, actually it's right on it. So I'm gonna lock it. And now I'm gonna move to the right. I'm gonna show you how to create an area. Mural is really simple. I can do something like, I'm gonna just create two stickies because that's easy. And I'm gonna grab these two stickies. I'm using, I'm, I'm, um, putting pressure on the left side of my trackpad and then moving so that I can encase both of them. And I can, with the right trick, trick, I can put that organized into an area. So I can organize it into an area and this is already an area, it's unnamed, but I already have it as an area. So it's exportable, I can work with it and so on. The other thing that I can do is include an area from the frameworks part. On the column to the left, 
there are several frameworks. It's amazing what it's in there. You've got the freeform area, which is the default, but you can have a grid area, a two by two grid, three by three, three lines, a bullseye, but you can go in, look into design, and you can start having those things that uh, Felix was talking about. I can have a roadmap with stages and different processes. I can have what they call an assumption grid, which could be, and you can change it. I'm gonna put this one in. I'm just gonna make it smaller. I can put the assumption grid, grid here, okay. But I don't want it to be high risk, low risk, uncertain, certain. I want it to be something that goes to the stakeholder analysis. Let's say influence and interest. So I can make a, a box. Let's put it white, put here high interest. I'm gonna um, reduce this a little bit. There you go. And I'm gonna change it into a text box so that I can insert it there. Get a little bit bigger and so like that. And again, because this is an area, if I absorb it, then now I can move it and high interest is there. So based on this, I can change whatever framework and it's amazing the frameworks that there already exist there. Um, on this design one, I think you mentioned uh, Felix one on, um, well, there's this one that they call Hills, which is basically like the, uh, the next steps of a, of a workshop. Who's gonna do what, when, or instead of while, or, right? You have this idea prioritization that you can also use. Uh, and you can go on and take a look at what the frameworks are. And they're, they're really interesting. Obviously, there's also um, agile ones and business ones that are complete canvases. So you can kind of include a canvas and start working on the different sections. Okay. Um, how, how are we on time, uh, Felix? Um, we should come to an end and move on to the next okay. part. Okay. Again, as I, as I mentioned, this is a way that you can work and create these things. We have created a lot of them. I mean, Olivia, Felix and I, we've been working with Mural. So we have created different frameworks. There's other people who have worked a lot with Mural and created different frameworks. And this is something that through the CC Net forum, we could start uh, asking, and who has a framework for this or for that? And that could be part of your workshop if you were to use Mural. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop there and give it back to you, Felix. Thank you very much. I'm going to start sharing my screen again. Um, Armando, while I, while I introduce the next uh, session, can you make the uh, breakout rooms mural um, uh, available for everyone? So copy the link on my end, it's grayed out. Um, okay, <clears throat> we're going into the next dynamic session. Um, you see, this is the mural that Armando and, uh, and Olivia and I are using to demo this stuff. <clears throat> uh, you see on my tabs up here, I have different ones open. Um, this is the, the where in the world exercise. I see the duck, visiting duck is still moving images in here. Um, and the next one um, that we wanna use is the breakout rooms. But before we go there, we wanna actually show you, um, and the question has popped up already, is how can we how can we use that uh, for um, CS uh, related uh, products such as diagrams or fit ratings and, and stuff like that? So um, what we did here, uh, you all see my screen, right? Yeah. Um, what we did here is this is basically a, a JPEG export from Mirati. It's a results chain. Uh, you've seen it a million times, pretty sure. Um, and this down here is just a quick mock-up. Um, with the same techniques that Armando already introduced um, to show you what are the, the capabilities of um, recreating uh, the elements from the standards, right? So you have your light blue intermediate results, you have your threat reduction uh, results, conservation targets uh, outlined with a, with a little scope box. This one here is a mock-up of a group box, so it actually works really well. Um, 
of course it does not replace Mirati because there is no uh, algorithm behind this. There is no, the, the, the arrows are just visual arrows. There is no connection of the system, obviously. Um, so this doesn't replace, you know, maybe it may not replace the Mirati version of things for you, um, but it helps you or it lets you organize um, uh, processes for diagramming with a remote team or with a team that has remote access only at this point. Um, and, uh, and then from there, you could digitalize it back into Mirati. Um, until we have online diagramming with Mirati Share, um, as some of you may know, I am part of the Mirati team. We are currently working on online diagramming, but until we have that fully functional, this would be one, one way of doing it. And as Armando has shown you, the colors can be, can be changed. So this could very well be a situation analysis, a conceptual model. Uh, we chose a results chain here, but of course, this, this, the same thing works for, for conceptual model. All right, diagramming is pretty clear. I mean, it's a digital whiteboard, so you should be able to do diagrams, but um, what about, for example, threat rating uh, or viability analysis? What we have mocked up here is sort of something that resembles a good uh, or a workable grid uh, or matrix for a threat rating. You recognize it. We have the, the threats on the left-hand side, our conservation targets up on top, and then basically just a, a table uh, format where we added round sticky notes. These are round sticky notes. You could do the same. You see down here, I added three different ones. If you want to go stress-based uh, with your threat rating, that's doable, of course, as well. The downside being, this is, you know, the, the, well, the, the, the pros on this one is you do it remotely with your team. You can discuss, you put the stuff in. The downside being there's, again, no algorithm behind it. So you don't get the summary values as you would have in Emirati. Um, but it's, a, it's probably a very quick uh, uh, solution to then, you know, go in and, and uh, digitalize that in, in Emirati. Down below here, you see the criteria. We put them up. This is just, you know, food for thought of how to, how to trigger, you know, or make everyone remember the criteria for a, for a threat rating. Uh, while you are in, in such, a, such a session. And remember, you can always break up uh, the group into subgroups and have breakout rooms and have people discuss just one link in the chain and yeah, whatnot. So um, this is just an example of, of how a uh, threat rating could look like. The same holds true for a viability analysis. You could build the viability analysis uh, table in the same form, put any you know, guidance materials next to it down below on the right-hand side, left top bottom, um, that helps the team to, to maneuver through these, yeah, sometimes quite complex discussions and, and topics. Um, yeah, again, it's a whiteboard. There's no algorithms behind it. So you would have to uh, digitalize that uh, at a later stage. So um, yeah, this is, this is uh, as far as we have taken it with regards to uh, um, conservation standards uh, products. All right. Um, I'm, I'm not monitoring the chat. Are there any immediate questions that we would need to address, Olivia and Amando? If not, we'd go to the exercise. Um, just to Chad, yes, uh, you can get the you can get a report of the mural sent to your account with um, everything that's been added to the mural mural attributed to the person that put it there in answer to Chad's question. I don't see other questions, but I haven't been monitoring it closely either. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll check that once uh, you are in the, in the group works. Um, <clears throat> okay, Armando, the, the link is ready, I assume? Yeah, the, the link is okay. ready, only the, the instructions is the link we're going to give you, please, please click on it, and it will take you to another mural. You have created Ouch. another mural, but exactly. you will have Armando. to look for your group. So right now, Olivia Maybe. is going to do, oh, Felix, you want to say that? Give me a second. I'll, I'll show that in, in, in just a second. Um, I just wanted to know if, if the link is ready. Um, so you see, this is the presentation uh, tab. This is the where in the world uh, exercise. And here in the third tab, we have created a separate mural for just the breakout rooms. We're going to divide you into 10 breakout rooms and share the link. Um, please stay with us uh, in Zoom uh, for now, just so that we can explain the exercise and then we provide you the link. And, it will, it will bring you into the, into the breakout rooms. For you to understand, what we're doing now is we're giving you a quick task, it's super simple, and we're dividing the group uh, within Zoom into 10 breakout uh, gr uh, groups. 
as you know, or I'm sure everybody knows, Zoom has the capability of sending participants of a call into breakout separate rooms, smaller rooms, with just the people inside that you that you want to have in that uh, in that room or randomized. Um, and within those groups, we now want you to discuss uh, and work on that task and capture your results, clicking on the link that Amanda will share now in the, in, the, in the Zoom chat and find your room. So if in Zoom, you are part of breakout room four, this will be your room. If you are part of breakout room seven, this will be your room. So you basically just zoom in on breakout room seven and you start your work with your team here. There will be a lot of arrows all around you, this is your room where you have to focus and where you will do your stuff. And right now you see the task already. We have it written up in every room again. The task is that together as a group, you come up with 20, with 20 food dishes of any kind and you sort them into no more than three categories, right? Remember double clicking directly on this canvas creates a sticky note. Um, yeah, and the, and the rest you'll find out. Um, so we will share the link um, now. now please everyone click on it. Um, and then we, once we send people into the breakout rooms, we also have to go into the breakout rooms and share the link again. So Amanda, Olivia, uh, we have to remember that actually, because I think once we take everybody out of the, of the call, I'm, not sure I'm actually going to stay in the main room and any of you who are co-hosts can remove yourself from the, anybody could remove themselves from the breakout room. Okay. Um, so I yeah, know, I'm going to yeah. open all the rooms now. Are we good to go? Oh, people are yeah. in there. <laughs> people are coming in. All right, everyone. Um, Note that so the your breakout room as you get sent there and go to that place on the mural where I see you all right now. All right. Um, so everybody, please mute yourselves. Um, we pulled you back uh, with a little bit of a, a, a short notice from the breakout groups, but the exercise is, is pretty clear. Uh, and I think, I hope it was a fun exercise. Uh, group size was seven, I guess, more or less, five to four to seven people, let's say. Um, <clears throat> just quickly as a debrief, um, what we see uh, or what we saw is um, exactly what should happen, right? So we didn't, we only gave you a very high level task. Some of you only used images. Some of you only used sticky notes. Some of you put uh, little boxes around the sections. Some were aligned vertically, uh, horizontally, some really random. Um, but you basically get the, uh, get, you know, you get the message. Um, this is, you know, you could use that, for example, for um, having little breakout groups to discuss, I don't know, brainstorm on conservation targets, for example, right? Or elaborate all of the threats for one cons specific conservation targets, you know, and, and maybe have two different groups working on, on, on you know, a set of, of conservation targets. Um, yeah, and um, I mean, there's a gazillion more uh, ways of how to use that. The beauty here is that we're actually combining the powers of two platforms. One is Zoom having the breakout rooms option, and the other one is Mural as the uh, the canvas, the digital whiteboard for you all to meet and, and, and capture the thinking together collaboratively uh, at the same time. Um, yeah, um, so that's the idea. With that, I would actually hand over to Olivia to, for the final uh, part of this, uh, of this session. Thank you. And what I'm uh, once again going to do is send everyone to, this is gonna be interesting. <clears throat> I wanna show you how to vote on something. So when you are setting priorities, when you need feedback from your group about uh, what they would like to see action on uh, first and foremost, you want to be able to vote. So we often use sticky notes to do that, or rather sticky dots to do that. Um, in person, we can also do that in murals. I'm just finding my way to the right place on this mural, and I'm going to send you back uh, um, into... Olivia? Yes. Just before you send them, send everybody to the, to the voting, um, you, you can give a link to each area in the outline. What we did for the previous example was sent you all to breakout group one, group one, and then you would have to move to look for your breakout group as look Felix pointed out. If, if you do that for, let's say a workshop, you can give them the link to each breakout group, to each breakout group. So 
you don't fall, you don't put everybody into the breakout group one and then say, go to your places. You just give them each their own space. That's it. Okay. Sorry, Olivia. Great. No, that's really great. And another thing you can do if you do get lost on the mural and you want to know where everybody else is, is you can go down to the bottom and you can look at one of our initials and you can say, follow this person. So follow Olivia or follow Felix or Armando. And hopefully we'll be in the right place and we'll send that to you. Thank you, Armando. <laughs> I've just learned something. Um, all right. I am pasting a link to the spot on the mural where we want you to go so that we can demonstrate to you how you can uh, vote. <clears throat> and once I see you all getting there, I am going to set up a voting session. I am going to ask each of you to vote on your top three. Olivia, do you want to, do you want to share screen now? Because you're not. Just a heads up. You're oh, that's a really screen. good idea. Okay. Let me see if I can. Oops, shoot. I'm ending the voting session. I am going to share this screen. one that's the one all right um, so hopefully you'll be able to see on the shared screen uh, the same thing that you're seeing on the mural which is these six options to vote on I don't know if you can see hopefully you can um, top three uses I apparently labeled it and started the voting session so each of you should have far too many votes okay I did this too fast uh, and I do apologize for that. I'm going to start the voting session over again. And I am going to ask everyone to use three votes in order to tell us what the top three uses are. Top three uses of mural. And then you should see um, that you have three votes. And what you do to vote is you click on uh, which of the ones that you care about. And you can click on one of them twice and thus give it two votes or three votes. And then if you want to take back one of those votes, you can click on your number of votes and remove the vote and click somewhere else. I'm also going to set a timer now because we don't want to do this forever. And that timer is defaulting to five minutes, but I'm going to give it a one minute because that's the lowest I can go. And then it's now telling me how much time you'll see on the upper navigation that the blue the red square is active that's a voting session and the timer is active showing that we have 48 seconds left uh, for this voting session so is everybody able to place votes Olivia do you have, anybody to have trouble doing that link? now that you've changed the number of votes yeah sorry say that again do you have to reshare the link now that you changed the number of votes? I shouldn't. I started a new voting session. Okay, okay. Well, it, yeah, it's working. No, it, it's okay. working. It's working fine. Great. And I do see the number of people who have votes and how many votes they have left. Visiting GOAT only has, oh, Visiting GOAT is done. Great. Interestingly, that's the only way I can see that you're voting is by clicking on the down arrow next to the number of people that are voting. It's not showing up on the things that you're voting on. And we are out of time. All right, we went through our minute. So I'm going to end the voting session. Sorry if you haven't had a chance to finish. And we are going to show you then how you can see the results. So it shows you, this is something that is, people voted on a large, on the area, I think. <laughs> um, nope, now it's filled in. All right, so that was the top vote getter. I think that's the not wanting to have to transcribe. And then you can see, you can get uh, a sense of how many po people voted uh, for each thing and then also how many uh, unique voters there were for each thing. So you can prioritize, and some people voted for a sticky note. <laughs> Some people went out and voted for the results chain that's out there. Thank you. I love that results chain, too. Um, so we can also go back and see what earlier sessions. So look at that. I made a mistake earlier, and I started a voting session, and some of you started voting. I can see the results of each time we have opened voting on this particular set of questions. So you can use the same set of questions multiple times. You can also 
across the top here, once you've closed that, you can highlight how many votes there are um, for each of these things across the top. And what else do we have? Show the results page. You can go back to that. You can um, hide the votes, and you can delete voting sessions. So there's a lot of versatility around voting. I encourage you to explore that. We are almost out of time, so I think the only other things, um, speaking to objects that you can't vote on, like shapes versus stickies, I think you as the facilitator need to set up the things that you want people to vote for and then just try to steer them there. Uh, and it needs to be an object of some sort, I think. The last thing I think that was on the agenda, correct me if I'm wrong, is the set the arrangements for using Mural. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen. Uh, Mural has a somewhat, this is the only drawback to Mural, it's a somewhat confusing payment arrangement. You can get a free trial for at least 30 days. They were offering a free trial of 90 days if you said yes to the question they ask when you sign up for the free trial, which is whether you've been displaced by the pandemic. I'm not sure if they're still doing that. Get as long no, a trial as you can. They are not doing that anymore. No. Um, we and then I once my trial was over, I signed. I just set up my own what they call workspace. So they have a several tiered process. A workspace, which is, is you know a number of rooms in within which uh, you can then have murals. So murals sit within a room. Rooms sit within the workspace. Their visual for the workspace is an office building. I set myself up a workspace and immediately discovered that I was in trouble because I couldn't invite anybody else to that workspace by name without having them also be a member. Um, the membership uh, ranges you can find on Mural's landing page. I encourage you to go there and explore them. There is a 50% discount for nonprofits. Uh, I don't know if you're an independent consultant whether you can work something out there, but the uh, base rate is $12 a month for the most basic plan. You can invite people in anonymously to work with you. Um, and as guests for a short period of time. If you have, if you work for an organization and you have more than, say, five people, you'd probably want to explore getting uh, a workspace that all of you share so that you can all work together. I think any size organization, you want to do that. And uh, then they move up to, if you have more than 20 members, you get a few additional um, elements for $20 a month or $12 a month as a nonprofit. Sorry, $10 a month as a nonprofit. Then there's an enterprise plan as well for any of you who are part of a larger organization with 20 or more, 50 or more potential uh, participants. So have a look at their pricing page. It is a bit confusing. If you have questions about it, um, ask any of us. We have some experience, but we're not experts because it's a little bit murky. Any questions at the last minute before we end? Hey, Nicole, didn't know you were here. Maybe, <clears throat> Olivia, maybe just to add um, that Mural actually has a huge YouTube account that provides tutorials and how-to guides for all sorts of things. So, um, Great, Great right? point. Yeah, yep. so if you ever need so, support, um, that's, that's actually a really good resource to start. And, I would and it's very helpful. Out. On that last mural that we just sent you to, through that last link, there are links to, thank you for that, Felix, the mural uh, introductory video, Mural's YouTube channel, and then Mural for Facilitators on Teachable. Uh, so have a look on that last mural we sent you to, to that section of the outline. Learn more about Mural for those links. You see that on my shared screen at the moment. It's down below here. All right, and we'll save the chat. Oh, and I was going to show you, for anyone who wants to stick around, <laughs> um, the export function up at the top of uh, Felix's shared screen. Felix, maybe you could click on the export and it shows you what you can do. You can export a PDF and you can also export um, in text. a zip of the mural files. And that is where you can actually copy and paste. Uh, and you can get all of the stuff that's on, everything that's been written on a sticky note will be in a text file kind of format. So super easy to copy and paste into a report or whatever you don't have to then transcribe from the PDF. The PDF will give you a picture of the mural as a PDF. The zip file is actually what I prefer to use. They have different functions. Thanks, yeah. Felix. 
Yes, feel free to explore any of the links that we have shown here. We will re keep them active, uh, let's say, for the next, I don't know, seven days until we close it down. But um, yeah, feel free to click on it, use the links or keep the tabs open and, and just explore, double clicking, adding stuff and yeah. I think that we can end the session and then people can just keep playing, yeah? Yeah. Um, right. Sure. You want to? You want to? You want to close? Uh, say the last words. Just to say thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Uh, and we'll be doing this again in six hours. If anybody wants to come back and play again. Thank you very much. It, and it was will be amazing. And we'll send us the link. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Very fun. Thank, thank you. Thanks so much.